I'm going to start by taking the opportunity to thank Council Members Bree, Ward, Montgomery, and Marino for your courageous vote on the earlier uh, Topic 202. Um, honoring the will of the people is very important. I'm going to talk about the Torrey Pines Glide Report, no surprise. Pursuant to the Brown Act, I request all my slides be shown full screen. Uh, a month ago or so, two dead at Torrey Pines Glide Report. These are 16 news reports since 2010 of incidents, accidents, and deaths at that glider port. Yet on their website, they say, our safety record is impeccable. We average less than one accident over 10 years. Can they not count? I mean, those pictures that I saw you on those, showed you on these slides, these are the ones I found on the, on the web. These are the ones that got news coverage. How many other accidents and incidents that don't even get covered are out there or that I haven't found? It's a mess. So they are liars. This is the Yushpa skill ratings. On the left-hand side, we have P1, P2, P3, and P4. They are recognized as beginner, novice, intermediate, and advanced. The requirements for P1 and P2 are no requirements. You can just get a P1 and P2 by showing some skills. By P3, you have to show 20 hours of air time. By P4, you have to show 75 hours of air time. The requirement for us to fly at Torrey Pines, they require an intermediate P3 with additional hours totaling up to 50 hours. That's closer to a P4 than a P3. The dead pilots were P1 and P3, both signed off in February. They're dead on March 9th. They did not have the hours. Even the P3 did not have the additional 30 hours he would have had to have gotten to be able to fly there without supervision. So by their own standards, neither of those paraglider pilots satisfied the ratings and requirements to fly at Torrey Pines. So why were they flying there? Ms. Bree? Thank you. That concludes non-agenda public comment. We have